It's now 10 minutes before 7 o'clock. President Trump has dissolved two of his economic advisory councils after multiple CEOs quit. The president announced his decision to end the manufacturing and the strategy and policy forum councils in a tweet yesterday afternoon. The action comes after a rash of CEOs quit the councils in the wake of the president's response to the violence in Charlottesville. Hey, very good Thursday morning, everyone, and thank you so much for waking up with the Valley today. Kyle Bosch here with Lisa Badeau as we get started with nonstop news and weather all the way up to the top of the hour. And we are following breaking news for you this morning. One man is hurt and another is in jail after police say they were involved in a fight in North Fargo overnight. It happened just before 10 p.m. at Roosevelt Park on the 1200 block of 9th Street North. 31-year-old Muhammad Nakalai of Fargo is in the Cass County Jail on aggravated assault charges after police say he stabbed another man. The victim was stabbed in the leg and hand, but his injuries are not life-threatening. Police say the two know each other, but aren't sure what they were fighting about. Hundreds of people gathered on the University of Virginia campus in Charlottesville last night for a candlelight vigil against hate and violence. It's the same spot where torch-carrying white nationalists marched on Friday. Now, last night's crowd was quiet and peaceful, and a moment of silence was held for the victims of the weekend's violence. One of those victims was remembered earlier in the day as well. Family, friends, and strangers honored a woman who was killed during the Charlottesville protests. Those who knew 32-year-old Heather Heyer best shared memories of a young woman with a big heart, a stubborn streak, and a passion for justice. Heyer died when a man drove his car into a group of people protesting a white nationalist rally on Saturday. People in south central Minnesota will be cleaning up today after at least three tornadoes touched down last night. The twisters hit near the towns of Nicolette, New Sweden and Gaylord. Now several buildings and a number of trees were damaged on a couple of farms in that area. Along with the damage, the system also brought plenty of rain, but fortunately there were no reported injuries. Well, we are still dealing with some rain here in our area this morning from that very same system that brought the severe weather to Minnesota. Let's get a check of our storm team forecast now with Lisa Green. That's right. And even as that rain moves on, we're still dealing with fog from the impacts of this system that mist that has been in and around the Fargo Moorhead area this morning, too. So a lot of us still feeling the effects of this. We're looking at the rain in the east, Bemidji down into Hubbard County and Wadena County as well, getting some of those light rain showers. But it's been slow moving eastward throughout the morning here and will continue to do so. The cloud cover following that and eventually that will move on too. You can see there's some clear skies in eastern North Dakota. However, there are places where fog has developed with this swirling system uh, continuing to pull away and the sky is clearing. We do have that dense fog advisory uh, for us this morning. This includes Kitson, Marshall, uh, parts of Marshall and Walsh counties and up into Pembina County as well. Very dense fog there. Even in Grand Forks, a quarter mile visibility reported in that area, zero in Cavalier. And even in the Southern Valley, we have some issues. Valley City, a report of zero uh, visibility there too. And Lakes Country, even Fargo, we've had that low uh, visibility here this morning. 62 degrees in Fargo, 60 in Grand Forks, where we've cleared or where we spent the day on a clearer note in Devil's Lake. We've been seeing temperatures dipping into the 50s in that area. So looking outside, still those gray skies, still that fog and mist on the horizon here on your hourly planner. But notice how we see that sun moving in could be right around that noon hour where we start to get some of that sunshine for us in Fargo. Wind still out of the north and still breezy at times into the teens with some gusts into the 20s. Ahead for Friday, once after this clears up, we'll get into the upper 70s for Fargo. Friday, we may see an 80 degree temperature or two, but more chances for some scattered rain and thunder showers on Friday with a weak disturbance rolling through. Saturday looks fantastic though. 86 degrees, mostly sunny skies. And even Sunday, not too bad with a slight chance for some rain. Monday for the eclipse event. Right now, there's still that chance for some rain and some cloud cover that may obscure our view. Hopefully that change is coming up here as Monday approaches. Let's check in with Al. Police, we're back out here on uh, checking out the Metro Interstate Loop this morning, and uh, traffic is picking up. So are travel speeds. My goodness, uh, 65, 70 miles an hour, really common out here on the Metro Interstate Loop. Uh, westbound I-94 continues to be the busiest this morning, fairly typical for this time of day. Northbound I-29 is pretty darn active as well. Make sure you are driving extra carefully today, and on this gray morning, good idea to keep those lights on for a little while. Al Amit, Valley Today Traffic. Police say a bad batch of meth could be circulating in the valley. East Grand Forks Police issued a statement after three overdoses 
within 24 hours in the area, which they believe are related. Officers first learned of the problem after making a DWI arrest and finding two people overdosing in the car. During that arrest, a call came in about a man who was hallucinating after overdosing from meth. Investigators say the calls were related and that they found traces of meth at both scenes. Anyone with information is asked to report it to local law enforcement. Angry parents in the Northern Cass School District aren't getting many answers to questions that they have about some key school administrators. Over the weekend, Superintendent Corey Steiner was arrested for DUI and speeding. And last week, Principal Ryan Lyson was let go over an accreditation issue. Parents attended the Northern Cass District School Board meeting last night, hoping to voice concerns to board members. But they were told the topics were not on the agenda. One board member did ask why Lyson was not given the principal's job and was told by the business manager that it was talked about at a previous meeting and there would be no further discussion. Now, parents were later told that Steiner's charges could not be discussed during the meeting because they are considered a personnel issue. It's one of the numerous signs showing that summer is coming to an end. Back to school, not just for the kids. College move-in day is getting started in the Valley both today and this weekend. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop joins us live from the NDSU campus this morning with some advice for not only students and parents, but really all of us here in the area. Yes, college moving kicks off at 8 a.m. for MSUM and this weekend for NDSU and UND. And all morning long, we've been telling you things about what you need to bring, what you need to leave at home in for the dorm, especially if you're a first year student. But many of the halls are getting newly renovated here on the NDSU campus. Joining me right now is Ryan. Talk to me about what pe people need to know coming to campus. There's going to be an influx of obviously people moving their students in. If you live in this area or, or from Fargo, you might be seeing a lot more traffic this weekend. Yeah, we do a great job directing our families on how to get here. I would say if you live in this particular area, as long as you don't need to be in the center of the campus, uh, I think it's gonna be very manageable for you. But once you get into the center of campus, you're gonna find that we have people directing certain two-way streets become one-way streets so that we get everybody right up to the closest uh, location of their building without them all coming in on the same road. In this hall behind us, Churchill, it's been 80, it's 86 years and it just got renovated. What is the one piece of advice you would give parents and students about maybe one item they need to bring or be cautious if they bring this item. Yeah, you know, everybody wants to customize their room and, and one of the ways you do that is by hanging stuff on the walls and we absolutely understand that, but we, we caution to be careful about what you're using. Um, even sometimes the removable, we have found lately start taking off paint. So the students are ultimately responsible and in a brand new building like this, it's gonna be very obvious if it takes off the paint. And so uh, we suggest that they test with what they're using and maybe not leave it up all year, take it down, move it around so that it doesn't start taking off the paint and they're not having an awkward conversation at the end of the year with about damages. Okay, that's a really good advice there. And obviously make sure you know what exactly is going to be in your room before coming and what items you can leave at home and bring up. The biggest piece of advice I have out there to girls obviously is don't bring your whole wardrobe. Just those summer and fall items right now. Kyle, Lisa. It won't all fit in that <laughs> dorm room not, closet. No. Ashley Bishop reporting live for us. Thank you. It's home sweet home for Matt Cullen. The Moorhead native is returning to Minnesota to continue his NHL career with the wild. Yesterday, Cullen signed a one-year, $1 million contract, also filled with plenty of incentives. It will be his 20th season in the NHL. Cullen, of course, is coming off winning back-to-back -back Stanley Cup championships with the Pittsburgh Penguins. You might remember he did pre previously play three seasons for the wild from 2010 to 2013. As for that Stanley Cup, uh, he has confirmed that he is still planning to bring it to Moorhead once again. We know the date. August 31st. We just don't know the when and where. Of course, we'll bring you those details as soon as they become available. This is such great news for fans, and so many more people will get to see him play. Exactly. And he said yesterday in his statement, he goes, you know, obviously he's thinking about not just his career, but also his family. So good for him to be back a little bit closer to home as well. I love everything about it. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. In 84% of households with kids, it's mom who decides this. The answer bedtime. You can take part in our question of the morning by heading to our Valley News Live Facebook page and joining the conversation throughout the day. The sun, we're hoping, will return sometime today, Lisa Green. It will return. It's coming back, especially into the afternoon hours for a lot of us who are still stuck under the clouds and some of that rain that's still out there. So getting some sunshine, and that's going to help us to warm into the 70s. And if you're missing out on those 80s, we could see a couple of places getting there tomorrow despite some rain. And this weekend looks great. Saturday especially looks good, 86 degrees, with a chance for some storms Sunday.
The Today Show and CBS This Morning are just about to get started, but the Valley Today rolls on. We've got more live up-to-the-minute news and weather right now on the Fargo CW.